chased by a naked man in the forest. Hey y'all, this took place the summer of 2022, and I just never thought of writing this story down because I was so stunned that it happened to me, haha. <laughs> so every summer in my city, me and my friends like to make small campfires and chill, secluded area, because we don't want to drive an hour to an actual campsite and pay campsite fees to do so. These also happen pretty spontaneously, so it's a nice last minute home to do. There's one spot near my house that's located by a river that's really nice because no one usually goes there. The only thing to be worried about are bears, though, because living in Pacific Northwest, it's challenging like that, and my house specifically is located right next to mountains and forests. So one particular night at 11 p.m., I decided to go ahead of my friends and meet them at the spot and set things up early, because I want us to be chilling once they all get there. The spot I get to has a two minute paved walkway I have to get through and then I have to take a small trail ramping down the right side of the bridge that crosses over the river. Along this paved walkway is two ramps located halfway and another at the street of the bridge slash the ramp down to the campfire spot. Park my car at the beginning of the trail on the street and bring my campfire stuff like flashlight, lighter, small firewood, small shovel, dig out the pit, etc. I get to the spot and it's a small sandy beach kind of embankment on the side of the river with a small waiting area for toddlers with their families during the hot summers. So I set up the chair and I get to digging the pit with only my flashlight illuminating where I'm digging. I'm also just shoveling the sand right next to me, nowhere near the water, but all of a sudden, I hear a loud splash. A splash so loud that it can only come from something equally large, like a two-hand-sized rock. I'm confused because I swear I'm not throwing my sand into the water, even though I'm only a few feet away. I shine my flashlight at the water and I don't see anything. So I kind of just brush it off, thinking I'm just hearing things. But as I keep shoveling a bit more, I hear another loud splash. At this point, I think something is falling from above because logically, something must be falling into the water. I point the flashlight above where some trees are above the river, and I don't see anything big enough to make that to make the splash. So I keep digging, with my heart rate kind of going up at this point. I hear a rustling past the arch of where the bridge goes over the river. I quickly grab my light and shine it towards where I heard the rustling. I call out, Hello? No response. In my head, if it was a bear, I should be getting out of there immediately. There was no bear, or signs of anything for that matter. So I tell myself I'm just hearing things now, because I've seen horror movies before, and now my mind is playing tricks on me. But I hear the noise again, and it clearly sounds like leaves being rustled. So I shine my flashlight over the area again, and as I focus my eyes toward the illuminated area, I see the naked back of a man hunched over. I was kind of frozen in anxiety and stress because honestly, of all the things I was to see, I didn't think I'd see the naked back of a man. From the quick analysis my brain could muster up, he looked to be a mid-40s, shaved, not bald, and medium-ish build, like a mix between chubby and built. As I had my flashlight staying on his back, he started to stand up, and the first thing I noticed was that he wasn't wearing any pants either. My next reflex was to start packing up all my crap and getting the hell out of there, because now I'm piercing in my head that he must have been throwing things into the water to scare or shoo me away. So after using my reflexive deductive skills, I proceeded to speed walk out of there with all my stuff. I'm carrying all my things with me and briskly walk up the small ramp and I'm on the paved path now out of the forest. I can feel my heart beating in my chest and I am frequently looking back to make sure I'm not being followed. I'm in Crocs, mind you, so I'm hoping that if I have to book it out of there, I'd regret not being in sport mode from the get-go. I make it to the halfway point and a sense of relief starts setting in knowing I made it safely out this very scary situation. But as I check behind me, for the final time, I see something. Slowly creeping over the ramp, 
is the naked man crawling on all fours, as if he was a primate walking. His head was positioned towards me, looking at me as he made his way to the middle of the paved walkway. He slowly gets up from his stands and starts standing on his feet, and positions his body to face me. After setting himself in his new position, the man starts running towards me. I freaking book it. I run as hard as I can down the path. My flashlight jumped out of my pocket and I lost it, but I don't care because a whole naked ass man was chasing me at 11 p.m. at night in the secluded forest. I looked back for a split second and the man was still running towards me, still completely naked. He could have my flashlight for all I care. I wanted to make it out of this situation alive. I finally make it out of the forest and I run to my car, which is only 30 feet away from the end of the forest. I desperately get to my car and like a classic horror movie, I fumble with trying to get my key fob to unlock my car. I actually drop my keys and quickly think to myself, I'm actually dead. But I brush that thought off and pick them back up. I get my fob properly, unlock my doors, and throw my things into the back seat before getting into my car. This felt like an eternity, but in hindsight, most likely took six seconds altogether. As I try to guide my key into the ignition, I am fixated on the end of the paved path that I was at just a few seconds ago, waiting to see if the naked man was still coming. I feel my key go into the ignition, and I switch my sights onto the road in front of me and I zoom out of the area as fast as possible. As I drive away and I'm a good 30 seconds from the location of the horror that just took place, I get a call on my phone. It was my friends calling me asking me if I had made it to the spot yet, and all I say to them is, guys do I have a crazy story to tell you. They pull up to my house because again, it was actually decently close to the campfire area, and I tell them the whole story the way I told you just now. They swear that it was none of them trying to prank me or anything like that. And I also knew none of them would try to full sprint at me with their dong out. But as we were just talking out in front of my house, there's a college student who looks like he's walking home that's going towards the direction of where I encountered the naked man. I just yelled out to him, yo, be careful. There's a naked guy that was chasing me by the bridge that crosses over the river. He responds saying, Oh damn, really? I gotta go over that bridge to get home. All I tell him is, good luck man. The next day, I reported to the police by phone, but they sent over an officer so I could tell them in person and show them where the area I saw these things. When we went to see where I had initially saw the man's back hunched over, they said they didn't see any trace of anything being there previously but the officer said they would make note of it anyways in case it happens again. Some friends say it was a skinwalker. Others say more realistically, it's either a homeless, mentally ill, or a drunk slash high person. One theory I've heard my friends say is that it's a future version of me pulling a prank on a past version of me because honestly, if, when, time travel is real, I would totally screw with my younger self like that. So that is the only crazy let's not meet story I have, but damn, is it a story I will never forget. <laughs>